Hey, what's going on guys? Kurosama here, and today we're taking a look at a superior Steve in the form what of the, the high-grade RX-78-2 Beyond Global. This is a really, it's, it's pretty off the wall that we're getting this right after the Origin, right after the G40, and right before the, I guess, advanced, not advanced grade, is it like a first grade, uh, entry grade kit uh, that's coming out in a few more months? It's pretty odd, to be honest, that we're getting so many RX-78-2 kits, and I, I want to say that this is a left field one because the Revive is actually a really good kit. It holds up extremely well. The G40 is really cool, although it's limited. And then the Origin is obviously a superior kit in the terms of the high grade line. But can this one overthrow a lot of those kits? I can't really speak on the G40 or the, the Origin, but I can speak on many of the other ones. So let's go ahead and dive in and see how the runners are. So with the kit finally built, it looks great. First impressions were it's pretty bad looking in the design route. However, after building it and posing it and just kind of messing with the gimmicks, it's really amazing to say the least. However, I will keep saying over throughout the entire video that I do think certain areas of this kit is a little bit off, but the color separation is phenomenal. The you know, overall look, the colors are beautiful and the articulation is just superior. So. Let's go ahead and take a look at the details. Hey, and thank you to NewTypeHQ.com for sponsoring this video. If you want to pick up this kit or many others like it, you can go to NewTypeHQ.com slash so that way you can get 10% off your first purchase. So let's get on to the rest of the review. So here we have it in a 360 spin, looking really good. Honestly, the first impressions, like I mentioned, are just phenomenal. There's obviously a lot of design choices. I think were a little odd, but it still looks really good and to be honest if i would have saw this kit on a shelf just in glancing i probably would have thought it was a painted kit because the colors are very mute and it has more or less a matte finish so it kind of gives off that painted feel and i can only imagine if you're just putting a little extra detail work some panel lining as well as putting a matte coat on it this kit is going to look really really good on your shelf so with the details and design let's take a look starting with the head I really like the more slim look of the head. It's a little bit redesigned from the other high grades. A lot of it's going to be color separated, such as the top little camera that's going to be molded in red. And then the yellow is going to be for the Vulcans on the inside, as well as pretty much everything else. The only thing that's really not going to be color separate is going to be the vents on the side. Really wish that could have been molded in a gray, but eh, you could just paint that in. Now the eyes is going to be molded in a all yellow, so if you really want to uh, omit the sticker, the only sticker that comes with the kit, you can just paint black around the yellow eyes and you're going to be fine. You don't really need that sticker at all. 
Now like I do with all V fins, I basically just cut off these little nubs and sand it down. So it is gonna have those little safety nubs. Just cut it, sand it, and you'll be golden. Now with the body, I am actually not a big fan of how like slim the torso and waist is. This all like right here, this midsection, it just looks really, really tiny. And I'm gonna give you a little comparison right now. So on my left is going to be the SCM EX Bam Presto figure. He's actually pretty sought after. Uh, they're they're kind of rare at this point. Um, but for this one, it is the prototype Gundam. And look at the proportions on the prototype and look at the ones on the Beyond Global. Very, very similar actually. Like not like in terms of you know, the actual size and width and everything, but the stylistic choices that they went with the Beyond Global are just super, super similar to the Bam Presto figure. Um, not necessarily saying it's a bad thing, it's a different style, which I really appreciate. But overall, I mean, that, that's the moment I saw this waist, I was like, yeah, that is almost a one-to-one -one comparison. Just that's a little bit more tiny. <laughs> so it looks good, though. I, I don't really, I'm not going to say I hate it, but it is a little bit off from what I'm used to when it comes to RX-78 kits. So the colors in this kit are actually a little bit more muted than what other RX-78-2 kits are in the high grade line. But there is a master grade, the one year war version, that has a pretty much similar tone of color to this. So that's pretty good. I like that they, they took those colors and just put them on a high grade because we're always used to seeing the same tone of colors with almost every single high grade RX-78, unless it's something drastically different like the base Gundam. Now with the backpack, I like the surface detail on it and the fact that it's a little bit smaller doesn't bother me because the rest of the kit is fairly small. The biggest thing that's going to make me pretty upset is that the thrusters are built into the part of the backpack. It's actually two parts that sandwich together so those thrusters just slide through the hole on the outside which is unfortunate. I really prefer my thrusters to be on a separate piece altogether but this time around they just said hey they're going to be molded into the underside of this backpack which it, it's a little bit unfortunate that is also a seam running through the middle of the back right there so if you do want to do seam line removal it's really just going to be this and the beam rifle that's going to require seam line removal now for the arms i absolutely love the arms i love just the little design right here with the gray peeking out it looks really cool and then whenever I get into articulation it's going to be even better because there's a little gimmick right here in the forearm but yeah the arm is looking so wickedly good and the fact that right here is a uh, you know part of the gray piece so you don't really have to worry about trying to paint on the inside which is always a hassle you could just paint on the the gray part slap the white and then psh, you're golden now for the hips and front skirts, this is actually going to be two separate pieces, so like you normally had to just use uh, paint or you had to use a sticker, it, this is just going to be two separate parts, so painting is going to be super easy. The rest of the front skirts and then the side skirts and everything is pretty cool. I actually don't mind it. it. It all looks fine. The biggest thing is just that there's so much of a gap, like if you look at it from an aerial view, it's just there's so much gap in there. I, I don't know how the you know, decide to go with that because this, the hip range, this is just so much wider and, and just leaves so much extra empty room. To me, that looks pretty bad, but I don't think as, as much as this is they should have just widened up the, uh, the waist. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just my eyes, but this just does not look that great. Uh, it's really just too big, big of uh, hips. Now we're looking at the legs, I did think that these uh, thigh portions were just a little bit too long. The more I look at it though, it, I mean, it aligns with the overall proportions of the kit. It's not really bad. It's a little bit off-putting at first, I do understand that. However, the more you play with it and just kind of put it in poses, you can really mask that, like, the length of this by the poses. So every time I did put in some dynamic pose, I really was just forgetting that those are really long or just longer than the average high grade. Now if you look at the shins, these are going to be super thin in contrast to the calves. It's a little bit unfortunate. I, I really wish this would have been a little bit more meaty, but it kind of just, it's a stylistic choice that they went with. Um, it's a little bit of a bad choice. However, the kit still works with what it has. And of course you're going to have some gray showing right there. You're going to have some really good panel lines, some little etched in details. Still a little bit of a canvas, so that way you can just you know etch in your own panels, like in the back right here, in the back right here. It's all going to be completely blank, 
but it looks really good and like I said no uh, necessary like paint is going to be required everything is going to be color separated appropriately now for articulation the head is going to be on a hinge as well as a ball joint these shoulders can actually move up this back of the shoulder section can actually move out the shoulder pad right here is going to be on an individual clip so it can move a little bit back and forth but not really going to be any articulation on its own now this is going to be on a ball joint so you're going to have a good free range of movement bicep swivel two points of articulation for the elbow this whole forearm is going to be on a ball joint so you can actually pop it out and you can rotate it as needed or if you want you can kind of like bend it back and forth and the hand's going to be on a ball joint this entire midsection can actually move forward but it's not really a lot it can rock back and forth it's going to be on a ball joint right here for the waist so it can move around a bit front skirt's going to be on ball joints side skirt's just going to peg straight through here the entire back skirt can actually move out this entire hip section can actually rotate forward and if you want some of that extra little hip bend this piece can actually move out like so but it can still rotate so that's actually a great thing can move this far to the side this far forward this far back two points of articulation here at the knee so the first one goes that far and then you can finish it off like so peg and socket for the ankle ankle skirt can move up there's a piece connected inside here that allows it to move down and you do get a slight foot pivot so when it comes to articulation of this kit honestly it's the best one I've built out of the Revive, the Version 30th, the Base Gundam, and I'll include the RG RX-78-2. I have not built the G40, nor have I built the Origin, so unfortunately I really can't do any comparisons. But I can say that this is a fantastic kit, as well as just posability is through the roof. For accessories, you are going to get a left open hand. You also can get a trigger finger for the beam rifle, and the beam rifle is looking super damn sleek. I like this one, it has some really good etched in details right here. The scope can actually move back and forth, as well as the handle. But this is really just going to be two pieces slapped, you're going to have this, and then these two pieces up here. Uh, if you want to do some panel line removal, you're going to have to do it right here on the barrel. And you can actually plug in the beam rifle to the back of the skirt. And you also get a shield, which looks really good. You're gonna have the gray underneath and just gonna have these little lines. It's a little slight redesign of the shield. Uh, it's a bit smaller than what I think most of uh, the high grade shields are, but the underside looks really good. I don't really have any problems, a lot of surface detail. This is gonna be on a little peg, so you can swivel this little part around, which connects to the forearm. And then here's just going to be the like, little you know, arm handle, so you can slide that in and out, or if you wanna put it like this, you can just hide it away now if you want to put it on the backpack you're gonna to have to take the little piece off that connects to the forearm and then that little peg is just gonna connect right there to the backpack Lastly, we do have two of the beam sabers that fit fairly loosely in the hands. And of course, you'll get two beam saber effect parts.
here he is next to the version 30th. Which one is the better Gundam? I would say this is a very subjective comparison overall with any of these that I'm going to be comparing him to. But the version 30th, as good as it looks, it looks amazing. The articulation just cannot beat the Beyond Global. The price point definitely can. So if you want a Gundam that is more, you know, to the original design of the RX-78, then go with the version 30th. And if you want something cheaper, go with the version 30th. But if you want good surface detail, some extra little gimmicks, just amazing articulation, you're going to go with Beyond Global. And here he is next to the Revive. Honestly, I love, love the Revive. It looks super wicked. I, I love the design. I love the price point, which is like less than $10. It's a good beginner's entry into Gunpla. The Beyond Global, however, uh, once I stated before, has great surface detail, has a lot of cool articulation gimmicks. So for this one, it's definitely going to be your personal preference. Uh, I would probably just go with Beyond Global. Uh, it looks a little more stylistic. It's pretty damn cool. I love the overall colors. I know I'm not showing the you know, revived colors and it's 100% accuracy. This is the Olympic one. But trust me when I say that the colors on the Beyond Global are fantastic. So I'll give another point to Beyond Global. And here he is next to the base Gundam. Obviously not a true RX-78-2 kit, but it basically is. This is going to be um, a little bit more difficult for me. The thing that I'm, I'm really going to give it to the Beyond Global more is the colors. I do not like that highlighter yellow and the very bright blue. Those colors are just super, super high in contrast. So not digging it for the base Gundam, but I actually really love the design of the base Gundam. The articulation is almost going to be on par. Uh, just a couple of extra things is going to be on the Beyond Global, such as the hips. But the base Gundam is actually super fantastic when it comes to posing. It's, it's a really difficult one, honestly. But I would probably give it to... I'll give it to the base Gundam if you're going to repaint it. But if you're not going to paint either one, I would go Beyond Global. And here he is next to the clear RG RX-78-2. Obviously, this is really not a good comparison at all because of the fact that I'm using a clear model kit. But I do know what the RG you know details are, and it's not hard to look online to see what the surface details are. Um, this is a really hard one because they're both almost almost around the same price point. I think uh, the RG is roughly 300 yen more at default price, but you're probably gonna be able to find both of them at the same level price tag just because the RG Arc 78 is super cheap. Um, for this one. If you can handle a little bit more of a complexity of a kit, which is the RG, go with that one. I think the boxy, very mechanical look looks so cool, but that's that's design and that's, you know, more of the surface level details. Now, what about price point, ver you know, price point with what you're getting? I think what you get in the box of RG at that price point is actually splendid. You are going to get the bazooka. Uh, that's a really cool thing. I don't know if you got the Gundam Hammer. I would have to recheck that, but um, you really you get you get more accessories with, with the RG. But with the Beyond Global, you're getting what you're seeing right now and some beam saber effects. That's it, and that's kind of bad. So I would give the point to the real grade if you're going to go for a 1M144 scale RX78-2. Now I don't have the G40, but I've seen it and. It, that's going to be totally up to design. If you really like the design of the G40, you, I would say go for it because it's very unique. But the price point and what you get in the box, I, I would really just give it to the Beyond Global because it's a much cheaper kit. And it, it seems like it's a more fun kit to mess with, unlike the G40. Because, man, that hip design for the G40 is a little bit wicked. And lastly, if I'm just going to compare it with the Origin from what I've seen, Origin looks good. Uh, lots of good, just surface level details. Um, that's another one. It's like, which one do you really prefer? Do you like the Origin design, which comes with a magnitude of different optional parts? Or do you like to be on Global, which is a little more stylistic and kind of action figure-y? So for my final thoughts, here's what I got to say. Honestly, the articulation is fantastic. It is just the set average of what the high grade line should be. We've already kind of hit that mark with the Origin line and just some other kits here and there, but this is just 100% settling it that this is the articulation to expect when it comes to new high grades. And I love it. I absolutely love it. As long as I keep carrying over all these little gimmicks, I'll be happy. Detail and design. 
honestly, the detail itself is pretty good in certain areas, but it's so it's like super smooth on most of the kit. So there's panel lines, but it's in very specific locations and not in all areas of this kit. So that one, I would just say it's average. It's an average amount of surface level details. You got some little etched in parts, some little panel lines, but nothing that's really crazy. Now we'll say the design is actually going to be pretty damn cool. It's nothing that's outside the norms. It's really super robot-y in my opinion. It has a sleek design. Um, it's really taken away from the boxy real robot look, which isn't a bad thing. So I'm not going to say, oh, it's bad because it doesn't look like X. It's a redesign, so I can't really compare it with an original, you know, RX-78-2. It stands on its own leg, in which it is really good. Now for accessories, it's pretty average, maybe a little bit below average, but I I'm going to give it average. It doesn't come with much except for you get the beam sabers, you get the beam rifle, you get the shield, and one extra hand. Well, I guess two extra hands because you need the trigger finger for the beam rifle. But would it really hurt to come with a bazooka? Would it really hurt to come with a grenade launcher attachment for the beam rifle? Would it really hurt to give me a Gundam hammer even if that Gundam hammer was recycled from the version 30th? It wouldn't have bothered me. I, I, I want more of these accessories because the you know, Gundam, he's he's more than just a beam rifle and a shield. Give him the beam javelin. How, how often do we get a beam javelin with RX-78-2? They always try and sell us these little extra attachments, which is fine, but these are just small little extra detailed, you know, parts that we can add to it and give it a little bit more life. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with much. It's still gonna look good, but it's not gonna come with much. Now for price point and accessibility, it's... <sighs> It's okay uh, in terms of price, 2200 yen. I can understand where they're coming with with that price point because there's a lot going into this kit and maybe a lot of manpower and all that. Like, you know, they, they want to up that price because it took a lot of effort to get this kit how it is, but we've seen it. We've seen a lot of what, what this is in other kits, you know, in other high grades. So I don't think this is really breaking the mold. So why would the price point be that high? I would honestly say that 1800 yen would have been a better price point, but who am I? I don't work at Bandai. However, if you could find it for less than $22, definitely get it. But if you don't mind the $22 uh, price point, then go ahead and get it. Uh, but anything over $22 or whatever that equi equivalency is uh, to your region, mm, really, it's, it's all on to you. I, I wouldn't say more than $22 is going to be worth it, but if you feel like you can pay $25, then go ahead and pay 25 bucks. But like I said before, it's it should be a little bit cheaper. And you shouldn't have any problems getting it because it is a retail kit and I think it's gonna be pretty heavily stocked. But that's it for me guys, so thank you all for watching. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns about this kit, please let me know in the comment section below. I did try to get to everyone who mentioned uh, you know something in the community post. So I tried to do like the kneeling pose. I did a lot of comparisons. I gave a lot of uh, poses and my thoughts behind it. So hopefully it gave you a great idea if this kit is good or not. Me personally, I think it's a great kit. It's just some things are eh, hit or miss design wise, uh, but the engineering is co completely perfect. I love it. Just, man, those legs are pretty skinny. Other than that guys, that's it for me. So thank you all for watching and please like, comment, Subscribe if you have not already, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.